be smart guys when you if you're listening to this interview be smart and listen to your body Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gornation. My name is Phil and today's guest is somebody from the UK, a freestyle beast. I looked up some titles from you, the three times national UK champion, the two time yeah. WCO featherweight world champion and yeah, uh, yeah like just a crazy guy, uh, interesting personality from the UK. Welcome to the show, Jay Chris. Big love, G, big love, big love <laughs> and thank you for having me, man. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this. We received some some questions from the community. I will answer. Uh, I will question them, uh, ask them as well. And uh, yeah, just to kick off, um, how do you present yourself? Who are you? How do you present yourself to somebody who doesn't know you? Okay, so I'm like Jackal and Hyde. I say there's two people, right? There's small Spartan as an athlete, as an influencer, as a motivator. And then there's Jay Chris as a coach and a PT and an entrepreneur. So there's two people. There's two people. Yeah. In, in, <laughs> one, in one person. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, um, some, some hard facts to, to begin with, because these were the questions that got asked uh, the most. How old are you? Guess. Guess how old I am, bro. Uh, I think you are older than I think, because I would say something around 25, 26. You're on point. You're on point. 25 years old, bro. I'm 25, 25. years old. 1995, <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> I could have seen that, but yeah, I didn't. So yeah, uh, where, are you bo uh, where are you born? So I'm born in the UK, born and bred in London. Uh, central London as, as well um, but I'm in my nationality I'm three quarters Filipino and one quarters Mauritius oh wow so I'm very very exotic bro very wow. exotic Crazy. very brown and exotic <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah but that, that's cool that's uh, like uh, yeah um, how, how tall are you bro oh, that's a that's such a common question well I'm 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 actually five I think I'm quite small, bro. I'm very small. They don't call me small spawn for a reason. Do you know the centimeters number? Otherwise, I'll... I am not too sure on centimeters. Uh, five foot two in centimeters. I think it's like 100 and... One meter 57. Yeah, 57. Yeah, okay. Just for the... One meter 57. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We can say 157 centimeters. That sounds like maybe a little bit bigger, but... Um. It does, it does, it does. Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> nice. And how he heavy are you? Or like right I, now? So I fluctuate between weights. I'm, my weight category originally is supposed to be 53 to 58 kg. So I fluctuate around that weight. But right now, probably about 55s. Okay, cool. Yeah, 55 kg. Nice. I'm a baby, uh, bro. I'm a baby. I'm small, <laughs> but I'm a beast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think everybody knows who knows your like your your Instagram videos. Who is somebody who has seen you on a competition? Like your titles already say a lot. Um, and I know you. I think like I saw you the, your first performance live during the FIBO 2014. Can that be? Wow, that was so. That's six years ago, G. That's so long ago. Oh my god. But that was when I was doing straddle banana planches. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, let's get back to this time even further. Um, how did you get in touch with calisthenics, uh, like with, uh, with the sport in general? Um, uh, I didn't know it was a sport. I didn't know it was a thing. I thought it was like exercises. That's what I originally thought. It was just exercises, but... When I dug deep, it became a thing. So I came across it, I think, like seven and a half years ago from this date. Um, and I just saw a big bodybuilder. One of my friends was a big bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And I was very small, bro. I was around 35 kg at like 18 years old. It was wow. very small. You could bicep curl me. That's how small I was. Wow. And, you know, it was got to a point in my life where I was like, I need to change my lifestyle. I need to change myself. So I wanted to work out. Started working out with my friend in the gym, doing bodybuilding exercises, you know, bench press, the normal shit, lap pull downs, um, tricep extensions, all of that. Um, he ended up saying, if you could do this move, I will give you 20 pounds. So he ended up doing a muscle up, bro. And that's, 
and he was like around 100 kg, but he was stacked to bodybuilder weight, IFBB bodybuilder, proper professional bodybuilder. He ended up doing a muscle up and I was like, wow. I tried, didn't succeed. So I ended up just trying and trying and trying. You can actually see it on my Instagram. If you scroll all the way down, you see my first ever like muscle ups and the way it gets better. So I ended up doing chicken wing muscle ups. Everyone starts with chicken wing muscle ups. And then yeah. ever since then, muscle up on youtube there wasn't really much so it was just frank madrano hannibal for king uh, a couple of the bar stars guys and then i saw freestyle and then that was i was just like oh my god i i need to get involved i literally quit my gym membership got my 20 pound from my friend first of all <laughs> <laughs> and then took myself to primrose hill bar park and i just started literally freestyling there was no there was no other explanation and then i made my instagram just for myself to see my own progress it wasn't for anyone and anything else it was for myself um and then some of my videos started to get engagement and so i didn't know it, i didn't know i'm so rubbish with technology i didn't know instagram was a thing i didn't know i think it was like facebook you know like for your family and friends ended up being a whole big thing like um started getting invited to competitions i lost my first competition and then i started training hard and I haven't lost ever since my second competition in the UK. Wow. So yeah, and big big credit to Bar Stars, big credit to my boy Chris Harrier. Like they, these guys have been there from the start. Big love to my team, first of all, and my company, Bar Sparta. Without them, we all literally as a community in the UK came together and just took this by storm. Crazy. That's our side. Yeah. That's <laughs> like insane. So it also came with with videos, like with YouTube videos. There was nobody uh doing it in front of you there, in the UK? No, there, bro, there was no one doing nothing in front of me. It was just me, and I give credit to Big Spot and Anthony Ferguson. He, I saw it, it was a six foot four black guy in the park, same park as I was. I'm a five foot two Asian, and we literally kept, looked at each other like, we should work out together. Yeah. And then we created Bar Sparta, and it started creating a community, and then we literally started going through Instagram because I didn't know it was a thing started going through Instagram and then we saw Chris Harrier where he got in touch with me and was like you should keep it up keep going Ed Bar Stars and then I saw the rest of the community in the UK I didn't know there was a lot of reps and sets community here in the UK because as a freestyler reps and sets back in the day didn't get along now it's a bit different now it's a bit different we are, we are we're all in one but before we didn't know um but yeah i didn't know anyone in the uk i would say oh yeah i got start i got oh yeah Alan Bar stars invited me to my first competition stephen hugh landers he's like a 40 year old white guy do you remember him yes, yes yeah, I do. yeah 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 he's living in australia right now he's got um he's over there now but yeah uh he put me in my first competition and then he took me to russia man so big credit to him and that's why I met everyone else. I met you at FIBO. Yes. You know, um, and that's why I saw Faristi workout put me in competition. So it just took me by storm. I, I was literally, bro, going with the flow. There was no other way about it. I loved it so much. It took me out of the hood. It took me out a lot of shit that I loved it. It was like another family to me, you know? Wow. That brings us to a good question from uh, Iris from Austria, who asked, um, where would you be without street workout right now? In jail or probably dead, bro. <laughs> I'm laughing about it now because I'm living such a good life, bro, <laughs> compared to before. <laughs> um, yeah, I would I'd rather be in, in jail or dead, bro. That's for sure. Like all my friends from in the past are pretty much all in jail, like literally. So um, I'm just lucky. I'm lucky to be alive. Wow, crazy. And um, like um, you talked about the challenges that you had, uh, like uh, with, with bodybuilding, etc. Like what kind of challenges did you have uh, during your street workout competition, but maybe even before um, like your street workout journey, but maybe even before in your life that you overcome with the sport? Just in daily lifestyle challenges or yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. daily, bro, a lot, man, a lot, like a, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people don't know a lot of things about me, but I'm, first of all, I'm adopted from born, bro. So from born, I don't know my real parents. Like, I don't know who they are. I don't know who the fuck they are, where they are. I don't care because I'm, I'm good. But uh, I'm adopted from born by, let me show you actually. My tattoos tell a, 
tell a big story. So wow. I'm got I got adopted by this woman called Josephine. Um, she's actually a friend of my real mum's. Uh, she brought me up from when I was born to ten years old, and then she passed away unlucky by cancer. She had a brain tumor, so I went to foster care foster care for a couple months. And it wasn't really good for me at foster care because as a small, small, very, very abnormally small child, I got bullied, like heavily. So my foster care was like, I needed to move out. I need to find somewhere where I need to live. Is there any family members I know? I was like, I ain't got no family members. I only got this one friend who lived in the same area as me, Alex, who is now my brother. So I ended up staying with him for next two weeks after, well, this was when I was like 10 years old, bro like 10 years old and then uh his mom ended up adopting me so now i've got three brothers that's why i've got three sons i've got three brothers uh step brothers and a step mom another step mom called elizabeth and it's this tattoo right here no oh, that's my step brother actually elizabeth is this one mm -hmm. and she ended up adopting me so i got adopted twice so she's still my current mom uh i ended up moving out when i was 18 uh, got involved with the streets at a very young age from like 13. Don't really want to discriminate myself on an interview, but uh, got, in, got into a lot of trouble with the police, with drugs, London gangs, and nearly was going to jail at like the age of 19, just before calisthenics. And I was looking to do a lot of time. Uh, but lucky I didn't. Lucky I didn't. I was a smart kid, ended up getting house arrest and community service, and then I ended up stopping everything I did giving up all the street life, all the hood life, and finding calisthenics, wanting to get fit and healthy and get these gains. Like, I, I didn't have none of this before, bro. And, um, yeah, that, that was the, a lot of the challenges that I went through in my life that a lot of people don't know. Kind of the similar as Tatted Strength, except for Tatted Strength spent majority of the time in jail, and I spent majority of my time in the streets of London. <laughs> That's literally it. Got lucky, got very lucky. Crazy, yeah. Thanks for sharing. Um, have That's you always okay, have you always been like that, uh, uh, like an extrovert person, or uh, did it de develop with time? What do you mean by extrovert person, bro? Well, like um, you're somebody who, uh, when he comes to a competition, um, yeah, like you're quite loud and uh, like um, I call it extrovert, you know, like somebody. Extra, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. Yeah, I've always been like that. Well, I came from a my first mom. A lot. <laughs> See, this is another thing. This is where my confidence come from. Um, my first mom. She ended up putting me into a lot of acting. So I was a professional actor doing a London TV adverts, and I was in theater plays when I was younger. From like from five to 10, year, to 10 years old. So I've got a lot of experience in, in front of a camera and in, in front of thousands of crowds. I did tours around London in the theatre play called The King and I. Ever heard The King and I? And no. The Lion King? Lion King, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was one of the little fucking tigers running around, bro. Wow. <laughs> so I had a lot of experience then just before my mum, my first mum passed away. That's, that's where I got my experience. So I would say that I hate being in a place, especially when it's a sport and it's quiet, bro. I hate okay. it. Okay. I hate it. There needs to be at least some character. That's what will get that. For me, that's what will get the sport to blow. Do you know what I mean? Look at boxing, look at UFC, look at football, basketball, all the four sports that are making a lot of money right now. Not even a lot of money, a lot of excitement, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Without the extrovert, there wouldn't be no, no spice, no sass, you know? Like with this interview, if I was boring, just boring, straight, you know, being road and, and hood, this interview would be fucking shit, right? Okay. But right now, we're trying to add that spice. And that's what I try to do with calisthenics and street workout in general, try to add the excitement, the positivity, and try to show what this, what we do as calisthenics athletes and coaches. Interesting. Like, um, yeah, like a really crazy story that, uh, yeah, that's really inspiring for me because um, it's something that I didn't know about you, uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, really great to 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 get to know this. Um, 
do you still know who was your inspiration to start with with calisthenics like uh, yes I, I i and i call me and him are boys to this day he comes to visit me in london chris harrier and always go wide them two there's a lot more of course eric ortiz is my boy um daniel license these four people we always keep in contact we check it, we come and fly to each other all the time and also i keep up with the new school kids like the West Coast Warriors guys and people in Germany, Karash. Me, you see me, bro. I'm good with everyone, man. Like everyone, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by everyone in all different many ways. You know, it's not. But who first inspired me was always go wide. Do you remember him, Jordan Rollins? Honestly, please, no. please, no. I did not remember him. I'm he sorry. Like, <laughs> he was the first guy to like do all transfers, like the. The fucking transfers, bro. He was like from New York. He... Go on Instagram right now. That's <laughs> what I want you to do. Go on Instagram right now and type. If you're listening to this right now, go on Instagram and type in always go wide and Jordan Rollins. Even on YouTube, type these people in and you will see why I got inspired by these guys. These guys were the first people to freestyle crazy in my eyes, you know? Other than Paz and all of these people in the Bar Stars community, he was the man for me. He was my inspiration. Okay, nice. I'm gonna put him in the description for everybody not finding him right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you'll find him. You'll find him. You'll find him. He did. You know what? He deleted his Instagram at like 200k and d disappeared to Hawaii with his girlfriend Juicy Sin, and then he ended up coming back to life. Now. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um. Yes, so Yadav Street Workout asked, how long did it get you to learn the planche? So let's still get, get back to this first chicken wing muscle up. Um, how long did it take from there to get to the planche? I'm still working on my shit now, bro. I'm still working on my planche now, bro. So for me to get a good sol solid planche, I think it took me a good three years to learn properly. Because you have to, you know, you have to, Learn the bad form first. That's what I ended up having to do. I had a really, really bad form in my statics. Really bad form. And then you had to go backwards in order to go forwards, right? That's what happens in calisthenics. And the consistency as well, bro. It, it depends how consistent you are. Like, if you don't train your statics, you're not going to get them. Simple as that. If you freestyle and you want statics, you're not, you're not going to get your statics without doing statics and your reps and your conditioning. A lot of people, a lot of the kids new these days and a the new new generation come to this game with no, no strength, no strength whatsoever, which is up to them. But my advice, if you want longevity, if you want to last long in this game, you need to get stronger. You need to learn about your muscles, about yourself. You know what I mean? So it depends on how consistent you are. That's how long you'll get your planche. If you do planche every day and don't rest, you're not going to get your planche. You're going you're gonna to get injured. That's what's going to happen. So you need to be smart as well when you do your when you're learning your planche okay so, so there's no time limit there's no time limit bro that's what i'm trying to say to people there's no time limit you can't just say you know all these programs get six packs in six weeks that is a load of shit to me it, it, it don't it don't it don't come like that it, it comes like it comes it comes for a lifetime you know like planche is is basically life for me like i'm still trying to learn how to proper protract and how to dip my hips properly still to this day and and I can planch. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's always there's always a next step. There's always a next step. Like you have a chicken wing muscle up and then you have a good muscle up and then you say, oh, that's not strict enough. It's not a muscle up to me. So it depends on how consistent you are. That's how long you'll get your planch. Okay, so for somebody who just started, um, or like when you look back on you as a chicken wing uh, muscle up guy, three, two, three years, yeah, two, three years, bro, two, two, three years. And like, how would of, how, with your experience now, how would you start with uh, with uh, planching? Oh, bro, oh my god, if I had my knowledge and my experience now, I think I would. <laughs> this program is coming out very, very soon, and my beginners one hundred one program is coming out in the next three weeks. So my beginner's program is 16 weeks, bro. 16 weeks, I'll get you to pull up, push up, dip, and then 16 weeks probably to get your muscle up. So I would say a year to get a planche. 
okay. the knowledge that I have now, I think it would take me a year if I was to start all over again. Yeah, a whole year to get a solid, and it will probably be cleaner because I still don't have, I won't have the mistakes that I made before. Okay, and what would the schedule look like? Just to teaser a little bit the plunge program. A teaser. <laughs> so it would be it would be core conditioning on some days. It will be shoulder conditioning, and then it will be planche progressing, and it will be planche exercises. There's a difference. Just want to get that twisted to people, yeah? There's a difference. Progressions and exercises are totally different things. Mm -hmm. Totally different things. Um, but yeah, they're the four kind of. I think that's the four kind of hints I'll give you. That's what's going to be in my program very soon, and it's all going to be videoed, and I'm going to be doing it with you. So it's not going to be just a standard program where you read it. And then, and then there's a video. No, it's going to be, yo, guys, this is day two, and I'm doing this planch journey with you. We're doing this exercise. Three, two, one, let's go. That's what my program is going to be. This is why I'm taking so long. It's going to be heavily detailed. It's going to be all different angles, slow-mos, and everything, as well as explanations in the PDF. So that's my planch program. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, what do you consider as your biggest success in your career right now? Being a, being here, being alive, I'm I'm just grateful. That's my success for me. Just being able to make a living from what I do. Literally, I literally from making a living to inspire people. That's that's my biggest success. Obviously, the money is good. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> the money is good. When people say, "Oh, the money yeah, is good," the the, the line it is definitely good. It definitely adds a touch to it, but. The success for me from the life change from what I used to be to now, that's, that was the success for me. And look at me, bro. I'm smiling all the time, man. And I, I never used to be like this. So you see me in my videos, I look angry. Yeah, when I work out, I'm angry. But everyone's angry, you know. But I'm naturally happy. That's my big, big, biggest success, success is to be happy. Literally. Wow. Okay, so for you, it's the ongoing journey. That's uh, like basically the goal uh, of yeah, all the stuff yeah. that you do and touching people's lives. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, trying to get calisthenics to the mainstream sports. That's one of my biggest goals right now. Like uh, I'm working with so many brands, you know, I've got my agents and my managers working on putting me into adverts and stuff as a calisthenics athlete. So that's like one of my dream successes that's what i would say it's a dream because it hasn't happened yet it's happening it's happening i'm on the bbc news i'm on sky news i'm on all of these things we just need to make something to make the sport just go bang and oh my god kids and everyone will just be going crazy <laughs> okay and right now you're like uh you're working as a pt uh do you also yeah so i'm a I'm an actual influencer, so I get yeah. jobs for brands, uh, loads of brands, and I get loads of modeling deals, shoots, photo shoots, video shoots, and um, yeah, predominantly PT. I'm trying to shift onto online, so mm -hmm. soon I'm going to be an online coach as well. Going to be having classes very, very soon as well as the online program, so that's, yeah, that's what I do as a career. Oh, and I have my own business. I have my own business, Bar Sparta, where we sell merchandise and uh, personal training service for people in London. London, Dubai, and LA, and New York. Them oh. four cities, because them four cities is where we can be stable, as we would say. Nice. And nice locations. Yeah. yeah I love them <laughs> locations, bro. <laughs> That's great. Um, yes. Now I forgot my question. Um, but Wow! Um, yeah, no, no, no. We talked I'm just about... <laughs> I'm talking so much that you're just like, you're not like yeah. <laughs> no, we talked about the before the interview. Um, we talked about the weather, and you talked about that you're working outdoor, and that's something that I um, don't see a lot because, um, like in the temperature, uh, like of the UK, um, it's quite hard from my experience um, to oh. keep, keep up the high high level within in in a cold uh, outdoor wet area. You know, like how oh, I how agree. Got, got to get on with it, man. It just like I said, you know what? Do you want me to be real and say yeah. what I would normally say? Yes. Stop being a pussy. That's what <laughs> I would say. Stop being a pussy. No, a, a little bit of rain, a little bit of wetness is not going to hurt you. You know, you just got to be a bit more careful, a bit more smart, especially if you're freestyling 
or doing weighted calisthenics, you know, because it can be a bit dangerous. But um, you got to suck it up, man. We live in Europe. We don't live in fucking Bahamas where it's sunny all the time. You know, you live in Germany. We all have to suck it. Like, we all have to just get used to it and be a man and just get out there and do what we have to do. If you don't, then go find yourself a gym. You know, it's fine. But uh, I love outdoor workouts, bro. It's just, I feel feel more free. I can s- smell the air. You know, I don't smell no gymnastics feet. You know, sometimes you go in a gymnastics hall, it smells like feet. Yeah, I don't smell, I don't like that. I don't like that. You go in a gym, get people BO and... You know, the, 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 the atmosphere in the gym is a bit different as well compared to outdoor workout. Everyone in outdoors is, I don't know, it seemed a bit more friendlier. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, that's that's why I work out, uh, work out outdoors, bro. Always. Always, bro. Always. You to, but you have to have a gym membership somewhere, no? I have a gym membership because I train my clients in a specific oh. gym, but that's because of them, not me. <laughs> So I don't physically pay for a gym membership, no, uh, because I, I disagree with using the gym. Some of the facilities in the gym, like the box jumps, the boxes and certain things like the stretch apparatus and the mats. Yeah, I, I love it. Of course, the spas and all that. I love it. But if I'm going to work out as small Spartan, bro, I'm going to the bars. I'm going to outside to the park. bro. I'm not like, yeah, okay, yesterday was pouring, pouring rain. Yeah. And I went to Brixton Street Gym. But, bro, Brixton Street Gym is predominantly a calisthenics gym. Mm-hmm. So I went to a calisthenics gym in South London. That that would be like the one-off occasion. But okay. I'm always outside. Always outside. Well, yeah. respect for that. I hope that you're, like, I know that with this mindset and, um, like, outdoor has a lot of advantages if you take it, um, if you warm up properly, I guess, Um and take yeah, yeah, yeah. Your joints, it's it it works, you know. But um... yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, bro. Like you just got to warm up. The thing is, people go into the gym and because it's warm already, they don't feel like they should warm up. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to warm up wherever you are. You know. Yeah. I take them Russians as a prime example, bro. Them, them Russians, Ukrainians, bro. They're they're in a cold ice box, bro. They're basically in a country for lice. And they're still absolute animals. Big props to all of them guys, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like these people with the minimum of like uh, equipment and stuff like that, they and, and temperature, et cetera, uh, nutrition and like a lot of stuff is they yeah. just take out the maximum. That's really impressive. Exactly, man. Exactly. There's loads of films being made about, about outdoor workouts. Look at Rocky Balboa, bro. <laughs> Yeah. You know, they don't call him Rocky for no reason. But yeah, that, that is literally what it is. I, I love working out outdoors, bro. Okay. Um, others street workout asked, how do you fight the fear when uh, freestyling? Because you don't train in a gym. I maybe I think that's a good connection because you don't have like a lot of mattresses. Uh, like, how do you fight the fear? You, you're saying it already there, bro. You just said it. You just said it. I fight the fear because I put myself in the deep end. I literally put myself in the deep end, bro. So I like to, I, I love freestyling outdoors because of the stiff, hard bar and the floor, you know? It forces me to land it. it for, I, I, I use a lot of mental exercises to tell me, like, if I fall, I'm going to die. So I'm better, not, I'm better not let go. That's the kind of mentality I have. It's always about channeling the energy in the right way, you know, like... I'm always positive, bro. I always try to be positive as much as I can, especially when I get to the bars, because that your mind is where it's, your mind will take you more further than your body can ever imagine, you know. So that's that that's 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 how I I just dig deep, man. I dig deep. I fail and fail and fail to the point that it's just like, no, what's the worst that's gonna ever happen to me if I fall outside, you know? Um, and that, that's what I tell majority of my clients and. I don't know if you follow Little Spartan. I train a little, uh, a little fourteen-year-old yes. boy, yes. and look at him. He he's fourteen. Yeah. If you see a fourteen-year-old kid outside flying around, and he's, he, I'll I'll be honest, he's a bit of a pussy. He's a bit scared as well. But he ended up growing some balls, and look at him now. Five forty in ten minutes. Who, who does that? <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's just uh, I've realized ever since I've I've. When in a gymnastics room, 
I become more of a pussy because I got used to the bendy bar. I got used to the mats. So I try as hard as I can to stay outside. I try as hard as I can, you know? It forces me to become a man, you know? We're bar sparta for a reason, bro. We got put out in the in the in the cold and we fight that wolf. You've watched Spartan 300. Yeah. That's what we do on the bars, bro. We put ourselves outside and we do it, man. Okay. So you don't even get into the comfort zone. So you don't have a problem to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the thing is, everyone has their own comfort zone. Everyone. Like my comfort zone, for example, is I love being on a small bar. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, in, I don't know if you notice in competitions, I don't freestyle on the same bar as every other freestyler because they're all too high for me. Mm -hmm. They're way too high for me. So that's my comfort zone. But you, you can always come out of that. In a, it's, it's a process it don't just come like that man you know we're not aliens where we can just be like yeah i'm gonna erase this part of my memory to be like i'm not a pussy no more no it, it takes training just like just like training yourself you know you've got to train your mind this is why i want to go to thailand bro and see them monks man oh my god is it a I goal take a vow yeah that's a, that, that's a goal for me bro to, to go see the monks and take a vow of silence for a little bit and That's going to be the, probably the hardest bit and learn how to train like them mentally mm -hmm. meditation when, when it comes to food and and the way to look at things in life I, I want that same bloody outlook man because I've changed my, my my mindset this far I believe I can go a little bit more and I believe everyone else can do the same you know but yeah that's that's what I think about when it comes to come uh, coming out your comfort zone bro wow crazy um, how do you work out? What is your workout schedule? How does the the week look like? So you? Sunday is a rest day. Sunday is a rest day. I'm chilling. I'm editing videos and doing nothing. <laughs> um, Monday, clients and active rest day. So a bit of mobility, mm -hmm. a bit of scap training, uh, resistance bands. Tuesday, heavy freestyle, heavy heavy free six hour session every tuesdays and saturdays so tuesdays freestyle content and freestyle um reps and sets and statics and stretch obviously a warm-up obviously that comes with the freestyle in the beginning so that's like predominantly five to six hours of socializing and training okay. as well mm -hmm. yeah you know how it is when you get yeah. to the bar you're there for a long time especially when it's summer <laughs> yeah you know? that's true. um wednesday push day That's it. It's so simple as that. Wednesday push day, all push exercises. Thursday rest. Friday, active pull day. Active pull day. So not necessarily pull-ups. It will be light set. Scap training again. Mm -hmm. Dead hangs. A lot of wrist stretches. You, you get the gist, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, Saturday, again, heavy freestyle, heavy statics, reps and sets. And again, Sunday rest day. So I predominantly work out four days a week, I would say, or well, five days a week. Yeah. Wow. So in total, in a week, how many hours do you put in, in your yeah, like athlete career? Oh, shit. I do, two, I do 12 hours on Tuesdays and Saturdays. 12, 16, 18? 18? 18 wow. hours. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I could do more. But yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's because I've got the business side of things as well. If I didn't have the business side of things, I'll just be working out every single day and just chilling, you know, but I can't do that. I've got to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so interesting, you know, there are like athletes putting 40 hours in it, like 18 hours, like it's so different. That's what always fascinates me in these interviews, you know, like everybody's completely different. It seems like I'm talking to uh, like a wrestler and a boxer and like a feather, like, I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. So I different. Get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But everyone goes from, goes with, within them, you know, when I was younger, bro, when I started this shit, it was seven days a week, every day, even in my bedroom, doing it. <laughs> Like that, that's that literally it was it was probably about 40, 40 hours a week, yeah, like a job. It was like a job because I didn't have anything else. Yeah. You know, I was street life and doing calisthenics at the first two years of my life. Like it, literally that's what it was. So it was like 40 hours a week. 
for the first two years of my career. But then it got serious and I just had to prioritize certain things, you know. I'm 25 years old. I want to I want to be able to do this for the rest of my life. You know, I want to be able to have abs like this and be able to do the things I can do until I'm about 50, you know. So for me, I'm trying to I'm trying to be smart with my time and my body, my energy, you know, like I'm starting to feel it now. I'm not the same as I, how I used to be before, you know, before I had no doms. Like I wake up and I'll be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm going to work out. <laughs> I worked out yesterday, bro, and my shoulder is killing me, bro. I feel like an old man, but it, that's DOMS. That's, that, that, that comes with the lactic acid, but I never used to get that before. So within time, you start to be smarter and smarter and smarter, you know? I still work out insanely hard at certain times, but I've got to prioritize certain things, you know? Yeah. Like this interview, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prioritized this interview, and I didn't work out. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's 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 good, and I think people will appreciate it. And I, and I appreciate it as, as well. Oh, big love, my bro. Big love. Uh, it's an honor to be on here, man. That's great. That's great because um, yeah, the thing that I miss in calisthenics is uh, like sharing the knowledge. I know, like th there are a lot of people now coming up with with uh, planche programs, etc., and sharing their knowledge. This is why it's really good, um, like to um, that this sport develops also like from just free content on YouTube, etc. To uh, yeah, I will just take a shortcut, shake the uh, take the experience from a from a like from you uh, being in the game for what it was it like six over six years seven 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 years seven years yeah you know bro. like people can take a shortcut and uh, the same with the interview like they see maybe oh you you just work out four days a week or oh, just 18 hours per uh what did i say four days a week and 18 hours per week you know yeah. what am i doing like oh maybe this is where my elbow pain comes from this is because i'm working out uh 35 this hours. is exactly bro exactly bro in my opinion The calisthenics that everyone loves, uh, the calisthenics athletes that everyone loves, all the main ones, like a lot of the main ones, they don't even look after themselves, bro. And they don't, like, in my eyes, they don't really look at, like, they're, they're calisthenics athletes, but they're not really athletes, you know? You don't, if you have to look after yourself, you know, athletes come, the word athlete means so many different things to me, bro. It just not only means you can work out and do planches and freestyle and, oh, yeah, happy days. No, it, it, athlete becomes a motivator, You're going to know about your body, know how to train, know how to coach. That's that's an athlete for me, knowing how to look after your body for recovery, for mobility. Like, see you know how many people say to me, I've got, I got, I got injuries? Bro, I won a championship with a dislocated knee. I won a UK championship in a dislocated knee. Ever since then, I haven't been injured for the seven years of my life, bro. I've only been injured once. And then from there, I was like, I'm not getting injured again. I know what I, know what I need to do. But everyone else seems to get injured every three four months and it's like don't you learn from your mistakes so this is why i train the way i train now i'm cool now i can full plant now if you really want me to i, I don't need to warm up but that's that's because of the way i train you know what i mean like uh you've got to be smart with your body you only have one body bro you know once you bro if you if your wrist especially calisthenics if your wrist and your shoulders go oh my god that's it that's it like a scorpion bar sparta one of my spartans He's been out for the last year and a half because he's got tendonitis, very, very bad tendonitis on both his elbows. Oh. Both. He can't even hang, dead hang. He went from full planching to doing double backflips to now dead hang because he didn't listen to his body. So be smart, guys. When you, If you're listening to this interview, be smart and listen to your body. Don't, don't, work out like someone else because just guess what reality is you're not that person you're probably better you're probably different you know so try not to be like someone be be a better version of yourself that's it nice that's a good good uh, good reminder um what was the hardest move that you've learned so far like uh what what was the the move you the skill you've struggled the most with maybe a freestyle move maybe a statics move Freestyle move, a dynamic move. I think the worst, the worst one was definitely my my special move, my power 540, bro. That was probably the hardest. But I saw that move. That was the first move I saw that got me into freestyling. And it was done by Jordan Rollins, always go wide. Um, 
And he done it in WCO competition, Battle of the Bass, one of the first ones. And but I, ever since then, I was trying to learn it. So that was six years ago, bro. Wow. I only landed it clean in my whole entire life last year. Mm. It took me that long to like get the balls to even twist. But the hardest move, in my opinion, is definitely the full planche. A hundred percent is the full planche. I, it, bro, it's, it comes with so much, so many disciplines, all different types of dis- disciplines. It's unreal. Like, I remember giving up freestyle for a whole couple months just to come, just to learn how to tuck planche, bro. I was that weak, you know? Um, yeah, it took a lot of discipline, dedication, commitment, and a lot of different types of trainings that I would never, never thought about in my life. Like, who would have thought that I would be training my wrists? Who trains their fucking wrists? <laughs> I did. I did. So I can put pressure when I lean on my wrist. Yeah, I trained... My, my front delts I trained my, my hollow so much like there was so much things that I never thought I would be training so much just to get a move you know um, but yeah full planche and power 540 bro that was my two worst moves anything power related is way more harder than anything swing related just remember that people in an interview remember that anything you see swing is, is, is it takes like 10 minutes to learn anything with strength power it takes a little bit longer I think if you have the right mindset, because if you have... Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. If you have the right mindset, but bro, someone with Scorpion Bar Spa, he came from a parkour background, bro. Mm. Bro, pop, uh, professional parkour background. Then he came into calisthenics, yeah? And I judged him in his first, com- first competition, bro. Do you know what he did? He did a double 360 into a 540 into a backflip castaway. What? <laughs> And I was like, bro, you you did something before. You This is not your first sport. He was like, yeah, I'm a parkour athlete. I was like, boom, there you go. I was like, this is why certain things are a bit easier. But he couldn't do a planche. He couldn't do a front lever. Couldn't do a back lever because he was that weak. You know, so then that's what I was trying to say. That Like, yeah, it comes with mindset. If, but if you have the mindset, if you have the balls already, swing moves are predominantly easier than power moves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something that I get um, from a lot, lot of young athletes is that they say, oh, now I'm going to hard, uh, like I'm, I'm now I'm able to do muscle ups, like I'm doing calisthenics for a few months. I'm quite, quite progressing fast. Now in three months, I want to be able to do the uh, straddle planche and then three months after I want to do the full planche. You know, like um, something that I would be interested in from your point of view is um, like on a scale from zero, zero is like a beginner. Uh, where is the straddle planche if the uh, full planche is the 100? You know, is the f- uh, straddle planche like a third? Halfway, halfway. Is it really halfway? Oh, bro, it's a good question because I say, I say it to my clients all the time. A straddle planche feels so much different compared to a full. Full planche feels like, like you've got an elephant on your back, bro, on your, <laughs> on your bum, yeah. on your legs. I've got skinny ass legs, but it felt like, Oh, but it feels so different than a straddle planche. Um, put it this way, with your straddle planche, you can use your mobility and your flexibility more than if you was the full planche. So that's why I would say it's a bit, it feels different. So half, oh, bro, I don't know. Okay. Scale of zero to, zero to 10, full planche is 10, zero is muscle up. Say four. Four, okay, so nearly halfway. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, four four because there's so much more to learn after that you know there's the presses straddle presses pipe presses handstand presses and flags and and front levers back levers front lever pull-ups festos there's all there's all that in between you know okay okay but that's off uh, that's before planche like i wouldn't say to someone learn a planche straight away unless unless you got a muscle up amount of push-ups and dips What was the second one? Uh, uh, muscle up? Muscle, unless you have a muscle ups and a decent amount of push ups and dips. Okay. Then, yeah, decent amounts, you know? Okay. Decent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With great form. Because, uh, yeah, planche takes a lot of people out, man. It, like, it takes them out of the game, meaning like you can get injured if you don't know what you're doing, you know? You can get injured very, very hard, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you're young, you should be all right. Just, just be careful. That's all. Okay. Farhan is asking, what does your diet look like? How do you oh. get these abs? 
Oh, don't my tire. It's a bit weird. My, I'm a weird eater, bro. So I eat everything. I eat everything, but I fluctuate through diet. So if I'm compete, for example, if I'm competing, bro, I'll be a half-hearted vegan. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So half the week I'll eat light meats, white meats. So mm-hmm. chicken, salmon, chicken and salmon predominantly, and then. Like occasion of beef. I love beef. So occasion of beef, but sometimes I'll go vegan, vegetarian foods just so I can stay light. But in all in honesty, I eat, I, I'm sensible when I eat. That's all. I have a lot of sugar, a lot of sugar. Uh, that's my, probably the worst thing. That's probably bad for me. I can't give up sugar. Sugar is so hard to give up. Oh my yeah. God. It's so hard. It's a drug. Um, yeah, it's definitely a drug. Uh, but I predominantly keep it keep it clean and healthy. I don't eat no McDonald's and shit like that. No junk food. I do eat a packet of, or oh, I say crisps, but you guys will probably call it chips. I eat a packet of chips um, uh, sometimes, but a burger every now and then. But yeah, predominantly healthy. Okay. Smart, cool. smart eating. That's what I call it. Smart eating. I so have a balanced diet. Try not to go one side or the other. I sometimes fast like this. Oh, I haven't eaten today, and it's already six forty-nine, and I haven't eaten. Because you wanted us to see your abs during the interview, or why? <laughs> 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 no, I just not. I just I don't know. I'm just not hungry. I had a I had a coffee in the morning. I had a cup of tea, like English tea, and I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm probably gonna eat now because my roommates uh, are cooking. But yeah, uh, other than that, I'm I I, I go for how I I. I eat how I feel. Mm-hmm. I don't just eat because, oh, it's time. I'm not a bodybuilder, you know. I don't eat to put on size. I don't eat to, to, I eat for performance, bro. You know? Okay. If I'm hungry, I'll, um, I'll eat. If I'm not hungry, I won't eat. Simple as that. <laughs> so you don't count, count calories? You don't, like, stuff like that? I don't count calories. I'm not a nutritionist. So okay. I, I, I stay in my lane, bro, you know? I if I want to go into bodybuilding, yes, I'll count my calories. But I'm not trying to get bigger that quick. I don't have a competition anytime soon, so I'm chilling right now. I'm I'm, I'm liking the the rips. A li- I'm getting tra- I'm getting a little bit bigger though, bro, compared to before. No, like a little <laughs> bit compared to before. Nice. So yeah, I, I, I'm putting on a little bit of size slowly, but uh, I'm training differently as well. So um, yeah. That's good. Nice. Um, do you take supplements? Sudden, sudden sensei asked this. I, I used to take, when my first two years, I used to take protein shake and pre-workout and creatine, all three. So I used to take all three, but uh, I had, me and creatine don't get along, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, with the, that is, I get too, like, it's like I have so much testosterone, so much energy, so much <laughs> anger in me when I take, take creatine. Pre-workout, I take it when I feel like shit, bro, I take it. But if I, when I feel like shit, shit, like, like when I, when I'm really, really bad, really bad mood, I'll take it. And I have to squeeze in a workout. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no. And after the first two years, don't take anything now. Okay. Some herbal products here and there, but, uh, (laughs) other than that, nothing else, nothing else. CBD, some oils, uh, some fish oils that's that's it anything else no 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 okay good then the last question from the community become before we come to the quick questions and uh slowly to the end um yeah how do you keep your form 365 days the year is asking danielka stu daniel stu what how do i keep my form what do you mean how do i keep my form because like you see a lot of people um being uh, yeah, 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 um, I just keep doing me, bro. I don't change anything. I keep the same routine all year round. So I'm re- bro. So I'm ready. So if you're listening to this interview and you want to battle me and you want to have a competition, I'm ready. I'm ready all year round. <laughs> so I'm ready. That's, that's literally why, how I do it. I just try to keep and maintain everything. What I do realize I'm doing right now is I'm prioritizing my business. So 
my endurance is a bit, you know, and my abs are slowly disappearing. But because I used to be way more ripped, but if it came down to anything else, uh, I, I just try to keep up with everything. You know, if I'm going, so exactly, if I'm going on holiday, like I always, I'm always abroad. I'm always away. You know, but I try to keep strict in my, when I work out. So I work out Tuesdays and Saturdays heavily hard, six hours, six hours a day. I told you. I still do that, do that in every country I go to. So if I'm Germany on a Tuesday, oh, I'm still going to work out for six hours. There's nothing oh. going to change, you know? Even the food, bro. If I'm in Russia, I'm finding an English tea, bro. I'm going to find the food that I like, you know? I, if I'm in Norway, the same. I'm, if, I'm gonna, if I want vegan food, I'm going to go get it, you know? Like, I'm a go-getter, bro. So that's literally it. Nice. I like that. Um, yes. So we're coming to a few quick questions uh, for okay. the end. Quick questions, quick answer. Pizza or burger? Burger. Burger. By miles. I hate pizza. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a really, that's a little, little secret, but I hate pizza, bro. Okay. It has to be like, it has to be as thin as a piece of paper for me to eat it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you prefer dogs or cats? Dogs, 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 dogs. But you don't own one, right? I my my dog passed away last week. I had him for eleven oh. years. Oh shit! Sorry for that. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's uh, he's 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 still in my heart, so it's part of the family. But yeah, he passed away two, a week ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, I think it was. Yeah, I had him for eleven years, man. I had a big blonde six foot german shepherd no wow full blonde full blonde bro full blonde oh like blonde like your hair like <laughs> exactly like your hair all over there was not one bit that was like blonde bro it was beautiful man but yeah dogs wow okay um your favorite location in the world favorite country favorite city <sighs> for what For I wrote down everything. holidays, but like for everything, it's always LA, the LA, okay, LA, <laughs> down LA. If you get anywhere else in the world for everything, nature, cult. Okay, oh, there's no culture in LA. It's just American people. For, for bars, for calisthenics, fitness, for food, for fashion, for music. Uh, LA. Is it a goal to live there one day? Oh uh, yeah, this is one day. Until I conquer London, okay. then yeah, okay, one day. <laughs> um, what would change for you if social media just disappeared overnight? What do you mean by change? In what aspect? Like it just de deletes itself. Yeah. Like how does you? How does your life look like tomorrow? I'll still train my clients, and I'll still train. Just won't make no videos. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, And I'll still probably go to all of these countries. <laughs> just you won't see it. That's it. Okay. Everything will be exactly the same. Just no videos, no motivation, nothing. Just me living my life. So basically, else. basically, it's just sad for us and the community that uh, social media for exactly. you doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. <laughs> oh yeah, a couple brand deals, a couple yeah. sponsors will probably drop out. But other than that, I still get paid. I still enjoy what I do. I still train. I still see the people that I love. That's it. Okay. So nothing will change. Nice. Um, do you have a favorite calisthenics athlete? Yeah, I have a couple, but for different things. Then just go, let's go through the categories. That's okay, always so interesting. Eric Ortiz, my all-round favorite athlete. All-round. I think he's the G. Yeah, I think he, I love watching him. I love watching him. Yeah, no homo. No homo. Um, <laughs> For dynamics, there's this Colombian kid called Cablitos. He does mm -hmm. like a, a 900 to 720, bro, in one combo. And he does like extraordinary shit. But he's a new generation. So for freestyle, like hands down, I'll like slow down and watch his videos for freestyle dynamics. Iquan. Mm -hmm. Iquan and Tony Gasti, them two. Uh, Daniel License for the professionalism on a production, bro, and 
him as a person. I know him deep down, so he's one of my favorite athletes as well. <sighs> and for business, for business, Harrier, my boy Harrier. Harrier and Frank, them two. You know, big shout out to Frank as well, living in his million dollar house. The cunt. Sorry for my language, but he is, he is, he is a G. He is living his life as well. Um, them two, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two, two for business, three for calisthenics and videos. Yeah. Nice. Um, who would you love to battle in a competition? Ah. Everyone? <laughs> everyone. <laughs> everyone. Everyone. Everyone that's new school and they want to take out the old school generation. Let's go. I'm ready. Okay. okay. <laughs> Anyone that's new generation, I'm 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 waiting. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Okay. Good. Um, do you have a favorite book? Are you a reader? No, um, unfortunately, I'm not a reader. Okay. Unfortunately. Then we will just cut was, this out. If, <laughs> if, wait, 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 wait. If I was to advise someone to read something, yeah. it would be Law of Attraction. Law of Attraction, okay. A hundred percent, because it's, it's, oh, it's, it's got, the, listen to the book. L listen to the, sent the, the title, Law of Attraction. It will attract what you want you know and you would find out apparently for what you want i don't know why i don't read this book i'm talking i'm trying to sell it to you and i haven't read it but you know what? i'm gonna read that book one day i'll read okay. it i'll read and it there is also a free uh, youtube video uh, like uh r people reading it and like a document documentary on it so if you're exactly. not reading still get the the, content out. the audio exactly exactly just like this interview if you're not watching this right now you're listening to this yeah. shit and i hope you're enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> nice um best calisthenics event you've ever been at so far the calisthenics world cup bro in bahrain the team one do you remember no nope. <laughs> What? <be> <laughs> the, the the first place got ten thousand dollars, bro. Wow. Which we year was it? Sixteen, I think. Okay. Or fourteen? Yeah, sixteen. When it was the team battles, it was four versus four, bro. Wow. That was probably it was a WC a World Calisthenics Organization uh, event in Bahrain. And it was like a team of four from each country. So like you represent your country. That was that was probably the competition where I actually shed a tear with my brothers, bro. That's where I was like, I'm crying now because I'm emotionally like shocked of how far we've come. You know, like we're in Bahrain. We just won eight thousand dollars for doing tricks on a bar, bro. When All four of us, I'm not going to say who I was with, we used to sell crack, bro. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's, 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 like, it was just a, a moment in life that it was just, like, it was really good and we felt like a family, you know? And, and all, all the World Calisthenics Organization events, in my eyes, were professional as fuck, where to the point that they picked you up from the hotel, uh, from the airport, to the hospitality of the apartment and the hotel and the food and taking us around like in Dubai, bro, we did so many things. We went to the desert. Day one, we went to the desert. Day two, we went to spend time in the uh, Burj Khalifa and spa. It was like a proper professional taking care of the athletes and day four, dinner, like, you know, it was like a, a schedule, bro. It was like we were back at school again, except for we were getting spoiled. That's why I love <laughs> Well, WCO's um, competitions were all the best for me. Yeah. Wow. So shout out to them. That's uh, great. Yeah. yeah, World Calisthenics Organization. Brendan, big shout out to them. <laughs> big shout out to all the sponsors as well, man. Without them, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I wouldn't be getting paid. I wouldn't be living. I think I would be going back to what I used to do. And big shout out to the Russian Federation for getting my name out as well. 
the WS, WCF, without them uh, putting me, Raul, Daniel and Eric on the map, you know, and WCO for making me, for letting me have the chance to be the world featherweight champion for three years running. Yeah, so big honours to them. Nice. And the last question, and probably the most difficult one, no, maybe not for you, but we'll see dynamics or aesthetics. What would you choose if you have to decide? Oh, shit. Shit. Uh, what do you mean? But give up one. Give up yes, one. Completely. Completely. Like completely. dynamic, meaning like I can't do a push up, a clap push up. No, you can't. <laughs> I can't no. do a backflip. No, that's dynamics as well. Like the, the clap push, ah, I don't know. Like, I don't want to go too far, but I think you get the point. No, bro. Statics, bro. I, yeah, no. No, no, no. That, no. Statics, yeah, statics. Statics. So yeah, you go with yeah. statics. Y yes. Okay, it's locked in because it's it's, it's it's lot. Yeah, I can't change back because it's longevity. For longevity, statics. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. Last question: How can people get in touch with you? How do they find you? Yes. So you can find me on all social media platforms except for Twitter. Um. So find at Small Spartan J on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, and Oh no, Facebook! You can't get me on Facebook. You can follow my fans page. Um, I, I don't call it a fans page. I call it a supporters page because fans sounds rude, you know, in British culture. <laughs> so yeah. we say supporters page. Um, follow my supporters page, small uh, small Spartan J on Facebook and um, yeah, Instagram and TikTok. That's where you can find me. Nice, great. Yeah. So we're coming to an end. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone listening to this till the end. I don't know how much time passed. Yeah, over an hour. So uh, it's it's like in today's generation, people who sit down an hour and listen or watch something for an hour. That's like that has that needs so much respect. You know, like uh, this is really great. So thanks for that. Uh, first of all, oh, big love, man. Big love. I just want to say one more thing. If yes. you guys want my merchandise, you can go on my website as well fastparter.co.uk and you can get all merch it ships to all countries all around the world it can even ship to the moon bro <laughs> um but yeah all programs will be up there soon and big shout out to my team and to all my sponsors big shout out to bar spa big shout out to world w world calisthenics organization big shout out to bulk powders and for all the people that made this possible and a big shout out to go nation man <laughs> these guys they put in so much work You, 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 they put in so much work behind the scenes and for Germany in general and for the calisthenics community. Um, I see these guys supporting so many athletes all around the world um, and doing so many things for the community, like sponsoring events, helping out with events, hosting events. I see you guys working as well as athletes. You guys are working for the community side and it's like much love to you guys, man, because it's people like you guys that kids should look up to because this is what you guys should be doing if you want to make this sport better or if you want to make it in this sport you should be doing what we're doing now trying to spread the love and the positivity and trying to show you guys like bro i bet some of you guys that are listening to this now didn't even know the stuff that you heard in this interview yeah. because you guys are so new to the game you know so it's okay dig yeah and yeah it's okay yeah exactly that's exactly what i was gonna yeah. say it's okay because you're new but dig deep dig deep and see Who's actually because then you'll appreciate like what you have right now, you know? I never had nothing. I never had no program, no programming, no coach, no nothing. I had to literally learn street workouts. I was doing street workout. These kids these days don't do street workout, they do calisthenics, which is beautiful. And I I, I really appreciate guys like you. Thank you. That's like awesome to hear. Thanks a lot for your time. I know your Sunday evenings are precious and uh, yeah. Bro, then they're not precious, bro. Look, I'm chilling editing videos, <laughs> man. So like... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but still, you could be eating with your roommates. So uh, yeah, I just uh, appreciate your time. appreciate your insights. appreciate your story. Love, I didn't know that. I think like the people will, will love to hear that. Um, I love that when people talk about their life, talk about their 
um, yeah, their past, etc. Because it's really it it helps people. It helps people to see that they are not alone with their story, with their um, I don't know, with their past, etc. So yeah, big thanks yeah. for that. Oh, uh, big love, man. And people that are going through anything mental, man, like everyone goes through all of these things all the time. You know, you just like uh, as humans, we got to be better, better and adapt. Right. You got to strive through and just keep going. That's all I got to say. Like, so anyone that's going through depression or anything that, you know, a lot of ma- a lot of men don't talk about these these things, because as men, we feel like it's not manly to open up about, you know, depression and shit. But guys. You're still a man. If you got a dick and a balls, you're still a man. So don't worry about it, and stay stay positive and stay happy. That's it. That's true. So yeah, let's end on these words. Thanks a lot, Jay, for your time. Thanks everyone for listening, and have a great day, great week, great life. Great evening, great <laughs> night, great day, great week, great evening, bro. Everything. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a great life, bro. <laughs>